Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. It's been a long time since I posted and a lot of things have happened. First, I just wanna take a moment and say that I hope everyone is okay and I hope everyone is staying as safe as they can as their situation allows them to. And I hope it's okay for me to post this right now. I was just thinking that maybe it would be nice to see something finally come to fruition, finally be finished, maybe as some distraction during this time. So where we last left off in my project is that I had just finished all of my undergarments, all the way from my stockings through to my corset cover. And it was time for me to start working on the actual skirt, blouse, and jacket. And I was pretty excited because I picked up a pattern that was made based off of Angela Clayton's 1890s plaid walking ensembles. And I decided to do it in parts. And well, this is the first one of this whole journey. Now the color inspiration for my particular outfit actually came from an 1890s fashion plate that I have, which has this beautiful blue and white outfit that I thought looked pretty similar to the one on the pattern that I'm going to use. Now I usually like to put in some historical reference points, um, but I'm currently not in a place where I can safely get to my historical sewing magazine, so I'm not able to show you the ones that I had picked out. However, what I did find as kind of a reference point and that I just can't stop watching over and over again are these wonderful historic videos by a YouTube channel called Guy Jones. And you just see women from various parts of the world, various time frames, just walking about in their everyday wear. I'm of course going for a slightly earlier period, 1890 to 1892, versus a lot of these videos were filmed post-1896, but I still thought it was absolutely wonderful to watch just everyday people going about their lives and seeing not just a fashion plate of a beautiful outfit, but a woman wearing it and walking down the street and going about her day wearing these clothes. So I'm going to leave a link to all the videos that I've included here by Guy Jones down below. He doesn't only have videos from this particular time period, but from a whole range of time periods and from all different parts of the world um, that he's been restoring and putting online and sometimes even adding some sound to it. I really have enjoyed watching them. So I highly recommend watching those videos if you're interested. To start out this project, I decided to first cut out all of the pieces from the pattern paper. In order to minimize the paper that they use in order to print all the pieces, they of course mix the blouse and the skirt and the jacket pieces together. So to make it easier on myself, I decided to sort them into the different stacks for the pieces needed separately for the blouse, the skirt, and the jacket. Now that I have all the different pieces cut out, I decided to start with the skirt. So this entire video will actually be me attempting to make the skirt from this particular pattern. Something that I've definitely learned from my past attempts at sewing different items of this outfit that I'm making is that mock-ups help so much. I also had a bit of a hard time deciding exactly which size I would be from this pattern piece because I tried to take my measurements with all my foundation garments on, but it's a little bit hard to measure myself. I just decided to pick one of the sizes that the pattern has and hopefully alter it as needed after I make the first mock-up. Another fantastic thing about doing mock-ups is that it allows you to practice some of the sewing techniques that you need in order to make the final garment before doing it on the nice fabrics. So this allowed me to practice the pleating that I thought I would have quite a difficult time with on the finished garment. The finished garment will have these pleats made out of silk, so I really wanted to practice before sewing with my nice fabric. So here is the first mock-up complete. You can see that it definitely doesn't fit me fantastically. Uh, it's quite long, even when I pull up the waist to about where I think it should sit. So I definitely need to take a little bit off the end and it does not fit me around the waist at all. So I have to increase that size quite a bit. And because it required me increasing the size so much, I actually decided to make a second mock-up. Of course, my dog Nutella always loves helping, especially when I spread some new fabric all over the ground. This is how she really enjoys helping out. Here is my second mock-up complete. I think it actually looks much better than the first. There are still definitely some alterations that need to be done on this particular mock-up, but I do think it's much better than the first one that I made. And the length is much better too, allowing a little bit of room for hemming, although it is slightly short. So after making two mock-ups and how long it took me to make two mock-ups, I didn't decide to make a third. I decided to jump straight to making the finished garment. 
Here you can see me starting to cut out the pattern pieces from the blue twill fabric that I chose. And I finally bought some really nice scissors, so it makes cutting out fabric much, much easier than before. Like I said, the blue is the main color for my garment. And Nutella, as always, <laughs> wants to be right in the middle of the action. Anytime I'm working on a project, especially on the floor, she decides that that's exactly where she wants to lay right then. After cutting out all of the pieces that were required, I stitched them together. I also decided to change out the needle to work with a slightly stiffer fabric because this fabric that I chose, the twill, is quite thick and I actually really enjoyed working with it. It's probably the nicest fabric I've ever worked with and it's just felt so nice going through the machine, I have to say. And of course I made a lot of mistakes along the way. I did some test fittings and I realized that I had to make some seams slightly tighter, others slightly looser, so there's a lot of unpicking happening as well. Here is the silk that I decided to use. It's a slightly off-white silk. You can see it is quite translucent and this is going to be the accent piece on my skirt. So I decided to put some backing underneath it, which is this lighter cotton fabric that's also in white. But when you layer the silk over it, it actually makes it opaque rather than translucent. Now, I think I've mentioned this many times before, but I am a very, very novice sewer and working with a slippery fabric like silk for the first time was such a headache. So you can see me here pulling out my laptop every once in a while to reference tutorials and what people write. I'm trying to iron things out. I tried to sew the pleats, but you can see here that the needle I was using was pulling some of the thread in the silk and really kind of ruining the fabric. I did some more research and I saw that maybe I was not using the right sewing needle. So I went out and I bought a sewing needle that is appropriate for silk and I exchanged it to try and see if that would help. But even with using that particular needle and a different thread, it was still catching those uh, threads within the silk fabric and causing some unexpected appearance of the silk itself. So I decided to start all over again and this time I decided not to baste down each of the pleats to hold them in place but instead I was going to very very carefully iron each of the pleats and pin them in place with special silk pins and you can see I'm using a ruler to ensure that I have consistent width across all of the pleats and I think each one of these pleat sides took me at least eight hours to iron and pin and there are 20 pleats on each and I did two of those so I think that was around 16 hours that it took me to finish all of these pleats. When I had finally successfully attached them to my skirt, I was so happy. This is also the first time I ever did piping, which I thought made a really nice finished look across the top of the pleats. And here you can see that I'm working on the waistband. I did have to change it quite a bit from the way the waistband was shown in the pattern, but I do think that it ended up fitting me pretty well. So the waistband is three layers. I'm cutting out the silk first, then a thicker backing like a sturdier satin almost, and then I did fusible interfacing. I know it's probably not the most historically accurate thing to use, but it was what I had available at the time, so that's what I had. I also created the piping edging for the waistband. I had to redo the bottom. I did it based on the pattern first, and then I realized I needed longer length because I changed the waistband pattern so much. And then of course at the back, the skirt has to be gathered. So I gathered up the skirt before sewing it to the waistband itself. You can see I could definitely use some improvement on fusing my interfacing to the silk. I did the best that I could, but well, it didn't turn out great. I was quite excited about the buttons that I was going to use as the accent pieces though because from what I know these are original 19th century buttons taken from another dress that was recycled and I love how they look but someone can correct me that's what I was told so who knows. <laughs> And that's it. Here is my finished skirt. I'm quite lucky right now to be able to be in a place where I can go outside in a remote location and stay safe. And I think that while once again, like many of my other projects, there are 
a lot of room for improvement in this particular skirt. I am quite pleased with how it turned out. When I compare it to maybe some of the older style footage that I see, I do think that it has kind of the same quality at least a little bit as to what it looked like when those women were wearing them and walking with them. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a like. Uh, you can subscribe if you are interested in maybe seeing some more of these historical sewing or knitting projects. The next thing I'll be working on is the blouse and then the jacket after that. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next time.